Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. No! You really adopted the dark. I was born in it. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Bazinga. Two in the box. Ready to go. We be fast. Baby slow. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Here, are you okay? <laughs> okay, so so just just to recap. So we're not going to do honorable mentions as part of the show. Correct. Got it. Correct. Okay. Well, this this one we can because uh, we didn't post this episode on on the socials. So we But are you so one. when you say about doing the honorable mentions, you mean also grabbing the ones from the socials or Correct. doing the mount Okay. Correct. So the mountains just so you know among us. You know, so you know how sometimes we're like, "Hey, um uh, we're trying to find out the final mountain, and we're like, well, this one got a lot of honorable mentions. We're like, that doesn't fucking count. So it's going to count for the Patreon. So the Patreon will be like, hey, you know, the honorable mentions is going to be a thing. Okay. So that will be a thing. Anyways, we're recording, and to the listener, uh, right. you got a sneak peek into how we are determining how to start a Patreon and what you're going to get. So one of the things you will get will be the honorable Full mentions. frontal male nudity. And uh, <laughs> they get that for free already on my private only, only fan page. Um, uh, so uh, anyway, so we're gonna have a Patreon to the listener. We're gonna have a Patreon. We're gonna do the honorable mentions, and we're gonna do a mountain based upon the honorable mentions. So it's gonna be more interactive. And for those of you who already interact with us on social media, you'll know who you are. Uh, there's a lot of you, and this will hopefully get more listeners to be like, let's fucking uh, start, because my list is right. Maybe it is right. Maybe it is. <laughs> my favorite part is that, as opposed, it, it takes less effort for Neri to just do that long explanation than to just edit the episode so that it just starts <laughs> like a regular episode. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing this shit. All right. So, uh, thank you for checking out the Mount Geekboard Podcast, your favorite podcast to listen to four people uh, talk, debate, and argue over their top four, Mount Rushmore, if you will, of different pop culture subjects. Today's pop culture subject, as you can tell by looking at your listening device, is the Mount Rushmore of Sean Connery roles. Again, these are roles of Sean Connery, not the actual movies per se, your honor. So uh, in uh, R.I.P. to Sean Connery and in respect to him and in honor of him, we are doing this episode, of course. He recently passed away at the age of 90. Uh, uh, He is a legend. He is an icon. Uh, Will forever be missed. So with that said, uh, I am Neri Science. With me as usual is Dave. Howdy. And we have uh, Daniel. What up, y'all? And we have Jeff, who's uh, looking back at like if there's a fucking monster coming at him from sorry there. no because because league of extraordinary gentlemen's on the back there uh hey what's up guys <laughs> it I'm does right. look like, it does look like a scene from unfriended it's I'm so dark you, behind you yeah i'm like i'm like wait i'm looking and just seeing if a shadow is gonna come up behind well let me know if i'm gonna die guys <laughs> all right um uh, well let's go off and start off with you jeff because uh on my phone you are the uh on the right there in the corner of my screen uh, of which uh, the listener can go ahead and see on the YouTubes. We have uh, the YouTube, the MT Geekmore YouTube. We're doing, we're streaming the whole video. Uh, I'm actually, so I'm actually rearranging these so that they're going to be in the same order as, uh, as who you're calling them out. Okay. OCD is real, people. OCD I didn't even know that was an option. Is real. Yeah, seriously. It's, it's an option on the computer and yeah. not. Uh, Daniel, I gotta be honest with you, man. The the fucking new glasses and the mustache is giving me fucking pervy vibes. Uh, the whole thing that just it's just my beard's the same like as it. it. My beard's the yeah. same as it's been for year for I, years. I, I don't see the beard. I just see the mustache uh, and, yeah. and then the glasses and then the glasses. And I'm like, um, you look like you're gonna ask me to get in your van. They're my Edith that, glasses, man. That it doesn't have is, is windows. The, the, it's a windowless van, and you're just gonna like, hey, you, know, <laughs> you want some candy? I, just, I was just watching Zodiac, and you look like you could be in that movie right now. Yeah, I was watching that two days ago. I love that movie. All right. Um. Anyways, Jeff, how did you uh, come up with your list? So, Sean Connery, like as you said, is an icon, and and 
what he brings. I noticed a, tr a trend in his roles, so I'm trying to limit um, guys the, with accents. The the teacher, <laughs> but yeah, the guys with accents. The the teacher aspect of of Connery, which he did, he, he, a lot of his roles were that persona, um, the but they were all fantastic. Yeah, um, I was I'm legitimately trying to not repeat from certain mountains that we previously just did because I'm going to talk about the same thing, but my heart may not let me do that because they're legitimately my favorite roles of his. So we'll see. Right. We'll play it by ear. I've got a list. I'm literally just shooting it on the fly. So we'll All see right. what happens. Uh, Debono, what are, how did you come up with your picks? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I was voting kind of late and then I was having computer issues. So uh, these are just kind of some gut feelings. I'm pro I may make some audibles. Uh, for the same type of reason Jeff is saying, right? Like there are certain ones of these roles that I really, that I think are some of Sean Connery's best roles slash some of my favorites, but also I've talked about them on other mountains. So I'm trying to figure out exactly kind of uh, what I'm going to do with that element of it. But that being said, I'm it's just kind of gut check time for me. I normally put a lot, a lot, a lot of time and narrowing down into these things that didn't really happen today. So uh, we're just going to kind of see how it goes. Ah, you're doing a nary. All right. It's a nary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Debona very method. much is like me in, in preparing for these episodes. I need to know with enough time so I can do my due diligence <laughs> and research and make sure I feel happy. <laughs> nary would give me so uh, much crap for that. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give you crap for that. I just used to. Like, used I, would, to. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I'd, I'm just like, okay, yeah. Like, so what's, I, I literally did the list while uh, uh, well, skipping David. David, how did you come up with your list? Right? <laughs> um, you know me, uh, in the past, I've always used any opportunity to talk about um, Indiana Jones and the Terminator and Star Trek and any of my favorite stuff. So I'm going to keep talking about all my favorite <laughs> Sean Connery roles uh, because I wouldn't be true Love to myself. Terminator. What's that? I loved him in Terminator. He was uh, he was, he was so Terminator. fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> so good. <laughs> Are you Sarah Connor? I feel like we. I feel like that was a missed opportunity. I think James Cameron should have cast Sean Connery somewhere <laughs> in the in the movie. Like I'm not a main, but just somewhere in the movie. M maybe uh -huh. as the police chief in the original one. I think Sean Connery oh, could have yeah. been in any of the Schwarzenegger roles. That would have been amazing. Uh, like kindergarten yeah, cop. Oh, <laughs> Just... that would have been fantastic. <laughs> Rumble, baby, 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 baby. <laughs> he would have been he would have been great in junior. He would have been fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> Not only is he a pregnant man, but he's a pregnant old man. Like, oh, yeah, and, and no, try to explain twins. You keep DeVito, but you throw in Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I made my selection. I, I pretty much knew like my selection. We were to the listener. We were having a discussion where there was going to be um, specific roles that he played or movies, like just how are we going to, you know, like distinguish uh, this mountain. And uh, to me, there's not much of a difference. There's a diff There's a, like maybe one change that I would have done if it would have been based upon movie over over um, over role. Uh, but uh, I didn't stress it much. And then when I made the initial call, the Zoom call. Um, to you guys uh and you guys started coming in one by one i was uh, on the computer just going through his imdb to make sure like i just again it was it was a gut check it was a heart it was something that i've already had in my mind for you know these roles uh we posted about it and when he passed away on the, the geek Wars, uh instagram uh there's certain roles that i don't shut the fuck up about and uh that's gonna continue today um, the only difference is today we have a five minute timer. Uh, that's it. That's the only difference is that we're going to, we're going to just make sure I don't go overboard. Uh, all right. So are you doing the that, timer? Neary? Yes. Okay. Uh, with that said, let's go on to our number fours. With the fourth pick. Number four. Round four. I'm in no mood for your wife's crack. Let's get it on. All right, Jeff, hit me with your number four, man. Okay, so my number four is going to be something out of the box for me. I've never really talked to you guys about this movie, but I rewatched this movie recently and I realized how amazing his particular role in this film is. My number four is, and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong because I tried five different times, is Captain Marco Remius from The Hunt for Red October. You know, that was like just barely not my number four. 
<laughs> there's, I, there's, I, he's so great in what? this. Yeah. How are you? Like, I had money on you, Dave. I had money. <laughs> this would be on your mountain. You're already worth, worth 30 right, seconds so in, and you're already costing me money. Here's, here's, night. <laughs> here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing is that we're doing this based on his role and not on the movie. Because if we were doing movies, this would have made my mountain. Okay. See, for me, the reason why his role is because – and, and it's, it's with these Jack Ryan movies, you know, like you, you don't know the whole time. You're like, is he really defecting? Is he not yeah. defecting? What's he doing? Wait, why is he doing that? Hold on. What's this going? <laughs> and he's, he's got this way of, of playing that character throughout the entire movie where you don't, you're never comfortable. You can, you, you don't know how it's going to, what's going to happen until finally, you know, I'm not, not spoiler alert. You end up finding out that he's, you know, decides to defect. And then there's that, made up Christopher Columbus line that he gives to um to Jack Ryan at the end and that Jack Ryan's like welcome to the new world like but but I just love it, it this is Connery to me this is Connery being as straight laced as you can get Connery to be you know you don't really get the the smart aleck whips per se from Connery on this 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 is this is like this is Connery being just He's a, he's a sub commander and he's not like you're going to hear in my number three and my number two, uh, the smart aleck, like wisecracking character. Um, he's he's this guy who's you think he's conflicted throughout the movie. You don't know what's going to happen, you know, and he doesn't let you know what's what he's what he's really thinking until towards the end when you, you actually realize what's going to happen. And I just absolutely love I, I was never super duper into these types of movies. As I got older, I started getting into them. my dad loved Done for October, but now I can appreciate it more. And I just think he's he's fantastic in the role. Um, so, I mean, that's why I put him as my number four. I, I think that um, this might be the role where you and this is kind of indicative of his his work in in the eighties where um, he really starts to act and like kind of flex his acting chops, uh, which you saw early in his career, but after bond, it was kind of just different variations of himself, uh, which is fantastic. Cause that's what we wanted to see, you know, kind of like John Wayne or Humphrey Bogart, you know, you knew what you were getting when you went into a Sean Connery movie. And this was so different mm -hmm. for him. And, and I, he, he really is a fantastic actor. The rain to hit for him, as opposed to the stuff that he kind of used to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's why I picked it as my number four. I'm a, I'm upset at myself for not coming in the moment you mentioned John Wayne and not hitting the. That'll be that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was very upset at myself. I was like, "Don't be rude and cut him off and let him talk." And then you guys finished talking immediately. I was like, "Oh fuck, the timing is way off." How, how many episodes has it been since I mentioned John Wayne? Uh, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't. You alternate, man. You go between, you know, Schwarzenegger and Harrison Ford and and John Wayne, and you, you kind of go back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Um, you, you talk, talk about Harrison uh, Ford a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you like Hunter Harrison Red Ford? October, <laughs> Hunt for Red October. I, I'm I, I'm not the biggest fan of the movie, uh, but I love his performance. Um, his performance to me makes uh, that movie uh, like we. I'll, I'll watch it again for that performance for him. It, it's not even uh, my favorite Jack Ryan movie, but oh, I no, love his performance. In it. Yeah, yeah, but but his performance in it is just his performance stellar. is great. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of that yeah. movie, but I do. I'm a, I, him in that role is fantastic. Uh, so what's his name again? Uh, oh, his name? Captain Marco with a K. Ramius. R-A-M-I-U-S. Like you're going to spell it either way, if you care. Marco what? Ramius. R-A-M-I-U-S. Hunt for Red right. October. Hunt. <laughs> All right. Uh, right on, man. And you came in uh, with 10 seconds to spare. Good for you, brother. Good for you. All right. Uh, Debona, what do we got for our number four? Uh, so for my number four, this is one where I, I think I'm leaning more on this one as being more about the movie as a whole, but I'm still going to leave it here because I think that his part in it was very good. And I do really enjoy uh, this particular role. My number four is King Agamemnon from uh, Time Bandits. 
you know, the movie for like three seconds, but he was so good. So good. <laughs> it's it's such an absolutely small. It's damn near a cameo. <laughs> yeah, it's a brief role, and, and I I know that there are so many films that he's starred in that deserve these spots, but he's so good for these. He later shows up as a fireman too, by the way, uh, but. Uh, He's so good in his very limited screen time. And so on the one hand, yes, this is because I love the movie Time Bandits. But on the other, it's also because the power that he has to steal, to be memorable in the very short amount of time he has in that movie as King Agamemnon, I think speaks volumes to um, what he, you know, what he can do and what he, went, uh, you know, not on what he did before, what he went on to do. Time Bandits was early 80s, I want to say 81, 82. And the fact that he had come from doing so much, managed to steal an, an entire scene just right in the middle of this movie as King Agamemnon, a movie that's full of people that you know because it's yeah. the whole Flying Circus cast. Yeah, I mean, right. these these are people you know if you're a Monty Python fan. And he still manages to just completely – chew up all the scenery that he's physically allowed to have <laughs> and it's just and it's just it's it's an absolutely spectacular role to happen so quickly and i just i feel i would i would feel bad if i let this whole mountain so go good. without letting people know that if you've never seen time bandits for a very brief window in that movie sean connery <laughs> has an absolutely stellar performance as king agamemnon and him and him in that movie is like like matt damon when you're watching euro trip for the first time and like, yes. like he just shows up for like a minute yeah. of the movie, and you, that's what you remember from. And it's, it's the most memorable part. <laughs> yes, and it's and it's it's what you always like I, when you think back on it. And it's always great if you can find somebody to that'll watch Time Bandits with you that's never seen it, and oh you don't God. tell I, them that. Uh, well, oh, well, really? You, well, you know he's going to show up at some point now. But man, the the look of shock on someone's yeah. face when Sean Connery shows up in this goofball movie yeah. is is fantastic and like i said very short role but very very fun and uh, very memorable so king agamemnon I love it. from I time love bandits it. i love that picture. it's a great <laughs> all right uh right on um dave what do we got for number four all right uh because i love treading water that i've already been in before uh my number four is uh, jim malone from the untouchables Table. table. All right. <laughs> oh, you know, go ahead and cement that spot later on because yeah, I can't. I can't not have that one. Uh, I like the fact that he's like, yeah, that one. He was actually in that one. He spoke. He, did lines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he had lines. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my uh, got the timer, and my number four is. Uh, is King Arthur in First Night? Oh, great pick! Uh, good one, oh, great so I, good. I think uh, <gasps> it's um, King Arthur has been played by a lot of people, and right, and a lot of amazing actors, uh, a lot of them British, um, but uh, uh, and Clive Owen. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I got to be honest with you, I you know it's one of those things where when I was watching. Uh, first night, I kind of didn't know what I was watching at first, right? Because it's not like a super fantastical, like, hey, there's Merlin the Magician type of shit, right. uh, King Arthur story. Uh, but when I saw Sean Connery pop up on screen and he's like, oh, that's King Arthur, I'm like, yeah. No, that sounds about right. That's like, it's <laughs> yeah. fucking... It's, yeah. It makes it's sense. That fuck, yeah, it's that glove that just fits. So you go, yeah, this is... Uh, I could, yeah, this is, it. this is it. Like, it was perfect sense to me. Uh, it took me a little while longer to come to terms with Richard Gere being Lancelot. Uh, I was like, he's old though, right? Like he's fucking old, <laughs> right? Like are we not gonna fucking say he's old? It, that but, wig um, didn't say he was dude, old. Dude, that hair though. <laughs> yeah, that hair was legit. That hair. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. that yeah, hair was Lancelot, sir. Oh That's what counts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Lancelot was blonde, but whatever. Sure. I mean, we're gonna <laughs> skip over that part. Um, and Jesus yeah, was black. No, I, what the fuck? So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all fake, brother. <laughs> no, in my mythology, he's gotta be blonde. 
I'm one of those fucking <laughs> people. Uh, that's the same. I've had this same argument with fucking the other way around when I talk to people about uh, the um, what's what you call it, the King Arthur movie that came out with uh, what's his name? Oh with yeah, Guy Ritchie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Guy, Ritchie, Hunnam. Guy Ritchie's Hunnam. King Arthur, and I was oh, like, yeah. it was amazing, and they're like. It's not like the fucking story. I'm like, it's all made up. You fucking. It's all made up. You fuck it up. I mean, I think to date, I think the most accurate is a king, kid in King Arthur's court. I think that's the most accurate to the legend. Remember it that is. cartoon where the fucking football team went back in time and became uh, king, king yeah, Arthur? Yeah, the the knights of the knight um uh knight it, it was the knights of Camelot. No, fuck. I know which one you're talking about. And then they all yeah. had, they were like robotic like knights of the round table. Like their armor looked great. like robotic. King Arthur fantastic. and the and Knights like, of Justice. There it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Yeah, and I was like, "This is it. This is like I'm like totally fine with this." <laughs> I fucking... never saw that. Oh, oh my oh, god! Dave, the... You would have loved that shit. It, it was. Is. It's like it's... gargoyles with fucking King Arthur. Yeah. Time travel. Oh, this sounds great. <laughs> yeah, like I'm in. I'm in. it's yeah, it's one of those gold. things that you know. Honest to God, I couldn't remember it until I just Googled it, and it's like me- it just like revived memories because I, I remember this now that I'm seeing screenshots. It's like when somebody reminded me that Cops was a cartoon, and I went and looked it up and was I like, "Oh my yeah. God, I remember I have, this." I have the DVDs. I got them at Fye. They had the full <laughs> series, and I bought yeah. them. Fighting crime in a future time. I have That's that. Shit. Anyway, <laughs> the guy. The guy with the arm, fuck, it's crime fighting. Oh, <laughs> and the bad guy, yeah, the bro, fucking, bro. he opened up his trench coat and he had machine guns in his tent. <laughs> yeah, anyway, King Arthur. yes, I remember this. I remember this now that I've seen pictures. So King Arthur is my pick. Uh, in First Night, uh, there's nobody in Hollywood, uh, past or present, that I would rather have as my uh, as my King Arthur, in, especially in the Elder time of his life uh you know what i mean because you could have a young king arthur and the way he came up and stuff like that and the telling of that part of the story and that's all great and dandy and i love it still um but if you're gonna if i'm gonna cast a movie my fantasy draft of king arthur <laughs> i'm gonna fucking put uh sean connery in that role that's gonna be my I can't knock you on that yeah so all right and that's it uh 52 seconds to spare God, that i'm good all right um so for number fours we have Captain Marco Ramius uh, from Hunt for Mid October, King Agamemnon, 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 and All right, kid, don't hurt yourself. Time from Time Bandits. Jim Malone from Unto Unto Jubos. Correctly. <laughs> uh, and uh, King Arthur from First Night. Those are our number fours. Let's move on. Round three. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. All right. So our number threes. Uh, hey. What do you got for number three, uh, Jeffrey? It's going to get tabled probably, but my number three is Professor Henry Jones Sr., that is actually my number three. Okay, so we talk about it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so um, I, and Doctor Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I actually the, the guys know I rewatched this movie today, um, and I, I rewatching it. I guess as you get older, you notice things and you catch different things that growing up, you know, unless you're Dave, you don't really catch those things <laughs> because. They, <laughs> but um, you know, what I love about Henry Jones Senior is that. He's 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 actually such a flawed character, and he's he's not suave by any means. As opposed to be like like he's intelligent, he's a professor, but he's not the indie type of archaeologist. Even and even indie's like clumsy for a lot of times. He just gets lucky in the way he does it. But like throughout the movie, you see that you know indie's trying to tell this tell him you weren't a good father. Like you used to treat me like crap. But in reality, he is because he made him the intelligent person that he is today, but he did it in a kind of a shitty way where Indy really didn't get a dad. And then you have that, you have, you see him kind of progress from when they first meet each other in the German castle or in the cat. It wasn't in Germany, either, but in the castle, um, castle Brunwald, Brunwald. Yeah, no, it wasn't Germany. Um, and then, and then at, even just in that time from when they're, so they escape, you start to see 
this development. And then even at the end, he tells him, he's like, the best adventure was this because I realized, he basically tells him, I realized that, you know, your this the adventure was getting to become close to you in a way that I never allowed you to. Because, you know, because I thought that I was doing the right thing. And I, I love it. And but I love the fact that like he really isn't. This is one of those roles of of, of um, Sean Connery's where he's not slick. He's not suave. He's not, you know, he's not debonair. But you, you can you're right. But you can still see where where Indy gets some of that from. Right. Because I, I love that scene um, after they've been discovered in Castle Brunewald. And uh, and Indy asks him. He goes, "How did you know she was a Nazi?" He goes, "She talks in her sleep." Yes. <laughs> he says, "Why did you trust her? I didn't." Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know and, and it's great. Um, but you also see some of that, like, very quick, like, "I'll make it up as I go along." That's one of my favorite lines from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, you see that in in Senior in that movie too when like they're they're escaping and these planes are hounding yeah. them and then like he takes out the umbrella. the umbrella and goes, tuk, 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 tuk. You know, yeah. i fucking love that scene. i suddenly remembered uh, my charlemagne yeah <laughs> like, so, like... Su- such a such a great scene where you see that he's not totally totally worthless you know um he's just he's not used to this you know he is the more typical archaeologist like right. like indy says in the beginning of the movie 70 percent of archaeology is done in the library and right. that's been his father well and he even tells him like senior tells him he goes is this what you call archaeology <laughs> when they were like when they were getting into the fights and running away he's like this is what you call archaeology because yeah. they're they're from different schools of thought yeah but you see you see wow. especially seniors from the school of thought of an archaeologist right and, <laughs> yeah, right and Indy, Indy fucks his students. I, I, yeah, I love, I love like when, he, when he cracks that vase over Indy's head. Yeah. He's like, oh, no. He goes, it's a fake. You could tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Indy's like, oh, and my head's okay, too. Thanks. For yeah. that. He's like, no, I was talking about the vase. But you, but do, it, it, you, you do see that, like, that relationship starts to be repaired when they're on the Zeppelin. And right. and, yes. and, and Indy kind of comes out and he tells him this. And his, and his dad's like, I'm here now. Let's talk. What do you want to talk about? And Andy's like, well, I don't know. He's like, yeah. Well, what, the, what the fuck are you complaining about? We we have an adventure to go on and we're here together now. Let's do this. You know, right. so it, it, in his own way, you know, you're right. He, he is he is a good father in his own way. Right. And then they both kind of see that at the end, like as as it progresses, they both see where they're both wrong and they're both right. Oh you know? the, yeah, and him calling uh, Indy, Indy at the end yeah. when he says, you know, he says Junior, and then he finally says Indiana, and he looks right. up at him. Uh, oh, it gets me every time, man. And I just love uh, Indiana was a dog's name, and then yeah, and just, you know, <laughs> you named him after the dog. <laughs> yeah. But it's just it's it's it, I I I I love it, and I picked him on here because he's he's one of the characters. When I look at my list, he's one of the ma- the characters that I can see that isn't really like any of the other ones. He doesn't. He has that slickness, but to an extent. But he's more. He he's kind of a not to. I, I guess goofball is not the best term because he's not really a goofball. But he's but a fuck up. Right. That's a good term. Yeah. Yeah. He's a he's a fuck up. So I I think this is this is one of those characters that isn't. He's not quote unquote perfect. He's when real. You, like when you look at Sean, yeah. Yeah, he's he's very real, and and you you see that realness come out uh, uh, occasionally, and when it does, it's just you know it's delivered in a way only he can, you know, like the you know I've lost him and I never told him anything, you know, <laughs> yeah. like that's I, I I love I love when he gets human, right? Yeah, that's Ooh, yeah, nice. Nice. <laughs> I, I, I love the I love the pick. I, I, Last Crusade is is a spectacular movie. I, I can't really add anything to what you guys said. Uh, you guys you guys analyzed Sean Connery in that film far more than I ever did. Yeah, I, I don't like know if you rewatch. Uh, you don't like the movie, like, right? I was like, no, I love the movie. I oh, like, oh, this is like this is the this is the like Indiana Jones that I truly love. 
Uh, and uh, and even though I don't think it's negative to say this, uh, I feel like the other ones are a bit um, uh, overhyped. But Last Crusade is like a phenomenal fucking film. Like I think, uh, and that might be I, I might be impartial because Last Crusade was the first one I saw, the first indie that I saw. So I might be impartial to uh, to that. But it's a great. I mean, but you guys like what the bonus said. You guys analyze the fuck out of that character. I was like, oh, <laughs> you, cool. you see where he comes from in this movie. Yeah, you yeah. see how he became the person that he is today. Yeah, I like the part with fucking birds. That was cool. <laughs> that was it. I, wait, wait, right. I would. I should have get so. I uh, should have given the book to the Marx Brothers. <laughs> like, when he, when you brought the book to Germany. I sent it away on purpose. You um, dolt! Yeah. I sent it off All to right. him. Uh, the Bono. What is your number three? Uh, my number three, I believe, is going to stay table because it's Jimmy Malone. Yeah, that's going to stay table. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my number three is uh, Dr. Robert Campbell from Medicine Man. Oh, wow. Uh, oh. Wow. Yeah. I, I uh, have an affinity for this movie. Um, I first watched it in uh, seventh grade in, uh, I think maybe six, I think it was sixth grade or seventh grade in geography class. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but we fucking watched this movie. Uh, and uh, I loved this fucking movie. Uh, it was legit. Uh, I went home and rented it because I was like, I, I can't see this fucking 40 minutes at a time. I, I want to see the whole thing. Um, and it stayed with me. And it's one of my favorite movies of, of his uh, to this day. And it's uh, one of my favorite roles. Uh, he does play that, um, that uh, what, what are we talking about here? The, um, like a mentor. Teacher. Yeah, the mentor. Uh, and uh, he plays a mentor to another doctor. He's a doctor in the rainforest, and he's trying to find a cure for cancer. And they, whatever company. The chick from Goodfellas, he, right? The chick from Goodfellas, aka the therapist from Sopranos, uh, she was in like that's the doctor that's in over, and she has like a wedding, like her wedding is gonna be like in eight months or whatever it is. And the movie, not to spoil anything for a thirty-year-old movie, but the movie, it gets to the point where they finally find what's like the cure for fucking cancer, right? Uh, and um, the the thing is, they can't reproduce it because of all the 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 cutting down of the fucking rainforest that the that the white corporations are doing. So then the movie ends with them going on a hike looking for more specimens of being able to duplicate that that thing. But again, like that mentor role uh, role that he played, um that he's played before in so many of the films, uh, but the way he did it in this one was like he was a big like he didn't want to play that role. It's like he was in that he got thrusted he got that thrusted upon him, and they're like, oh, you know, she shows up and she's like, I'm from New York, and they they sent me to blah blah, blah to like she's supposed to like uh, replace him at some point, and he's like, get the fuck out of here, like he doesn't want anything to do with her, and throughout the movie they come to realize that um, they actually do like each other, but it's a situation where the science is above all, so that's that's where their common goal is like we're both scientists. Um, and uh, I, I love that role. I, I, and I, the whole yeah. movie is basically just him and Lorraine Bracco. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like and they're, they're pretty, just, yeah, like it's basically just them carrying the entire movie. It, it's, yeah, and it's they, and they use a deep real cut, indigenous, man. Uh, and, they, and, they, and they use real indigenous people. Um, and I remember my, my, my geography teacher was like, this isn't like uh, Dances with Wolves where they got American actors to play the role of the Sioux Indian. Uh, this is real indigenous people. She didn't say indigenous, but you get what I'm saying. It was fucking 1990. Uh, and then I was like, yeah. So that's one like tidbit in my head or whatever. Say? Yeah, because that's not a bad term as far as I'm aware. I'm, I'm very no, no, confused. No, no. <laughs> indigenous is the correct term she should have used, but she did not use that oh, term. Oh, okay. Is okay. what I'm trying to say. She didn't use that term. It was 1990. Nobody was using indigenous back then. Nobody was using it. Like, uh, it's a hung in, you're a hung in. Oof, boy. Dr. Robert Campbell for uh, Medicine Man. Um, yeah, I, again, this is one of those things where this movie would have made this role 
would have made my list whether we were doing movies or role. I really enjoy fucking Madison Man. Like it's like it is a master class in acting uh, from from both of them. And this chick did a great job too. Um, and I, I I really enjoy this fucking movie. So Dr. Robert Campbell, 41 seconds to spare. Mm. All right. Uh, so the number threes. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He played a lot of doctors now that I think about it. He did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert. It's the accent. Yeah. Um, our metric record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So our number threes are Dr. Jones Sr. for Indiana Jones Lost Crusade. Uh, Jim Malone from The Untouchables, Dr. Jones Sr. from uh, uh, Indiana Jones Last Crusade, and Dr. Robert Campbell from The Medicine Man. Medicine Man! All right, here we go. Round two. Dose. The sequel to Uno. All right, so... All right. Uh, Jeff, what do we got for our number two, man? So for my number two, um, this is the reason why I don't have Jim Malone on my mountain as much as I adore that character is because he's a teacher role Damn in that me. character. Right. Oh, Sorry, okay. I'm just fucking with you. Oh, um, then <laughs> this character that I picked is also a, a teacher character in the movie. And after uh, rewatching it today, um, I had to, to bump it up and at least talk about it. Um, I'll give the full name. Uh, Juan Sanchez Villa Lobos Ramirez from The Highlander. Yes. Um, such, mm, such a good <laughs> I, I was able I, to rewatch this today. I rewatched it in the hospital. Oh, okay. I watched it. I watched so it for fantastic the first time. I watched it for the first time like three months ago. Was it like three months ago? Remember <laughs> yeah. when I was watching it? It is such a ridiculous fucking movie. Such oh, a it is. Uh, absolutely. I, in, in the oh, best way so, possible. But so, a, yeah, uh, mm, yeah. honorable mention for me, man. I just, I couldn't find a way to get him in here with some of these other people just right. based on that role. I couldn't, but, oh, God, I love the pick so much. Yeah, no, his, 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 his portrayal, I mean, the first time you, you meet him in the freaking movie is he jumps <laughs> over them while they're about to have sex on horseback. And it just is like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And, and he's, he's wearing a fucking peacock. <laughs> he's wearing a peacock, and he's he said he introduces himself from Spain, but he's really Egyptian, and but with a Scottish accent, because you know, which I guess you can buy. Maybe he's pretending in the Highlands. Who knows? Uh, also, Christopher Lambert, a French guy, was playing <laughs> a, a Scottish guy. So I which, mean, let's not let's not cut too deep here. <laughs> I mean, well, but 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 at least he like would not but, but, like. Not since Van Damme played Colonel fucking uh, Guile, Guile. Uh, was, <laughs> was, but was an ethnicity played so correctly in a film. Let me tell you. But something. let me. So what about the white guy who played the Indian guy in Short Circuit? <laughs> oh my god! You mean the bad guy from Hackers, sir? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was brown face until like la- two years ago, a year and a half ago, <laughs> when I'm watching. Fucking uh, Aziz Azari's show uh, on Master of None. Yeah. And they talked about it. And I was like, what? Is that? Like, I had to fucking Google it. I had no idea how much I was. Uh, so the reason so this- I pick Ramirez, um, and it's oh, it's tough because I love Jimmy Malone. I absolutely love him. But Sean Connery is Ramirez. The reason why I went with this is because Ramirez, he's an immortal who isn't necessarily looking for all he's not looking for the power he understand he he literally goes there finds connor and says i'm gonna train you to survive like i know that there's this quickening that's gonna happen and everybody's gonna be drawn to it and everybody's gonna be drawn to fighting each other so there's only one because there's only one but he doesn't care gathering he want the gathering sorry because the quickening is when they, they get the power sorry it's yes. the force um, yeah <laughs> yeah the gathering so the force right yeah <laughs> and then you can run with the deer um, but like, <laughs> um, but the thing is, it's true. There's that scene where they're on the yeah, oh, I know, the I know. I, just, um, I love but, this movie so much. Yeah, no, it's so ridiculous. But um, <laughs> the quickening I, also allows them to come back to life in the second one. Yeah, right. Yes, with that awful movie nobody talks about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait, Christy and I argued it. She was like, "That's the best Mario Van Peebles movie." I'm like, "Ma'am." Uh, <laughs> Jaws, Jaws for the Revenge. Uh, solo <laughs> exists, so let's solo. slow oh, no, down. She said Solo, that's right. She said <laughs> um, There's also so, a movie so, called Black Panther that was really fucking good. But whatever, let's try. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
Not or, not the Black Panther, Marvel's Black Panther. Oh, there was a Black Panther oh no, but that prior... wasn't the name of the... No, but it wasn't called Black Panther. You're talking about the movie about the story of the guy who founded the Black Panthers. Correct. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, but that's not called Black Panther. Is it? Not? I don't... I, I don't think so. I don't know. You look me, look you it up. Because I got five minutes, bro. Let me talk you, my part. You keep talking. You keep talking. <laughs> um, all right. So, so the thing with, with Ramirez, too, is, is there's this a beautiful scene where they're walking through the village. And this is one of the things that sold me on him. And he sees Connor with, with this, the, the new love of his life after he gets shown from the village. And he tells him, he's like, you, you have to leave her. With the type of people we are, you can't have kids. I fell in love with this Egyptian woman and, and also this Japanese woman that, you know, that's how he got his sword, which then Connor ended up taking. But, and he talks about the whole story of how he got the sword. And he's like, when she died, I was a wreck. I was miserable. I couldn't, I didn't want to live anymore. I don't want that for you. You need to end this because it's going to be the best thing for you. You know, he, you can see that Ramirez, despite having this ability, despite being this person that he knows that, there can be only one there can only, you know, ultimately according to the lore, he should be fighting this person, but instead he takes the time to train him and to prepare him and to, to show him the way so that he doesn't suffer like Ramirez did. And I just found that absolutely beautiful. So that, that's, that's one of the things like it, it's, I, I, I just adored how that, how that went about. You know, and then even when he's facing death with Kurgan, he he's, you know, saying, oh, this woman's mine. This woman's this because he knows Kurgan wants Connor. Mm -hmm. So he's doing everything in his power with his dying breaths to protect the, her, protect Connor and and keep, you know, keep it going. And he's he's so selfless in that, you know, and, and I, I absolutely just I, I realize I remember loving that character when I first saw this movie years ago. And rewatching it again now, I, I I rekindled that appreciation, which is why I was like, I need to talk about this today. Like I have to. Yeah, um, man. Like, like I said, it's it's an honorable mention for me. It's it's such it's such a spectacular movie. I, I mean, in its in its goofiness and in, in it's fun to watch. But you're right, in a movie that is so goofy and so outlandish, she really does portray a role that ends up becoming very relatable and something that you absolutely buy into as being, yeah, this teacher father figure type thing. Right. Absolutely. hundred percent. So yeah, that's my number the two. Mo the movie was called Panther. Yes. Okay. He played, he played Stokely Carmichael. Yeah. Panther. Okay. Panther. So I was way off. <laughs> Not way off. Um... <laughs> I know. I was just fucking. No, I was like, I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, yeah, you guys like this movie way more than I do. I think this movie would be great as a fucking <laughs> remake. I gotta be honest here. I know you guys hate no. remakes, but I think that the special effects would be would would like help this that story. I think is a great story. I just think the way it was shot and they've I tried was they've horrible. tried to make newer ones with varying degrees of success. I've watched yeah. everything with the word Highlander ever attached yeah, to it. Endgame and... was like re more. Endgame was like what in like twenty like mid two thousands, right? Yeah, yeah like two thousand five. Endgame was not terrible. That, that, um, was, that was the one where they brought in the Duncan Highlander from and the Connor. show. Right, Duncan, Duncan yeah. and Connor, yes. Yeah, that, that, was, was, two, that was good. That was I 2000. Okay. Yeah. I used to watch yeah, the show all the time. And, and again, I picked... And again, remember, I picked the character, not the movie. No, like, I, the right. character, yeah. Oh, no. Like, like I, can, I can agree with you that the movie's un paquete. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I love it every fucking second of it, and when Kurt Kurgan in modern day is its own fucking. Fact that he, he looks like he's wearing velvet. Is he wearing velvet? Is that what the fuck? Oh yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's a, like a velvet like musketeer outfit. <laughs> like so fucking great, so out of place. Uh, yeah. And with the pearl <laughs> earring, so the giant pearl yeah. earring hanging. Yeah, like... uh, I thought he had a. Did he have a feather earring? Is that what, at one point? Is that what he had? I, he might have switched it out. I know he had the big pearl. Like I remember right. distinctly seeing the yeah, big pearl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so Ramirez and Highlander. Uh, Debono, what do you got for your number two? Uh, my number two is one that we have talked about multiple times on this podcast for different reasons, uh, and he's absolutely got to be on here. It's Sir John Patrick Mason. He's my number two uh, as well. That is also my number two. He's yeah, my honorable uh, mention because that's another one that I had to like. I love it. So yeah, much, I mean, we've we have we have 
tre- like like Dave said to me, we've treaded this water many, many times. <laughs> Federal agents, Nick Cage movies. I mean, if we were to do Bay movies or whatever, you know, it all shows back up. But it's because. I think that we're all just right around the right age to where this movie came out at the exact right time to be not only just one of the most memorable and quotable movies that we've got going, but just this absolutely incredible character who is, while in a room with a chemical super freak, on the other side of what makes a knowledge coin, right? You hear people say there's book smarts and there's street smarts. He's like the street smarts version of good speed right good speed's got all the he's got all the book knowledge and mason is is the street smarts and it makes them such a good team and bizarrely ends up in like a teacher role again in this that's what's so crazy about it he's this buried in a hole completely disavowed a uh, british federal agent who managed to escape from alcatraz and now doesn't exist anymore and so they, they play him up as like this terrible, awful guy still ends up in the teacher role, still ends up just being ridiculously quotable, plays his action scenes well, outsmarts anyone and everyone when given the opportunity. It's, it's a role that, that we like it's, we can just never get away from because it is that good. Yeah, I, the only thing I would disagree with you on is the sense that is that what you said uh, I think is all correct. I would add that um, he's also the brains. He's also well educated. He also knows uh, you know knows Latin, and uh, that's what kind of throws him off at first about Goodspeed is when Goodspeed knows Latin. And he's like, oh, an educated man that rules out the fact that you're a field agent, and he's like, no, right. no I'm a field agent. I'm a few days. And um but he's super educated. Uh and I think that all the years that he spent in jail, he educated himself. I'm assuming this is a, this is just me fucking adding, you know, who knows. <laughs> this is more of his backstory. Yeah. This is our fan <laughs> canon <laughs> of the rock. That's how much we love it. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've done fan fiction uh, for <laughs> John Patrick Mason. Uh, he's uh, again. He's uh, he's fantastic in that role. He does, um, you know, when, when he does that fucking MacGyver shit with the with the with the soap w- rope with the rope. Oh, soap, yeah. The is, is. And uh, underneath the, uh, the um, underneath the uh, the sheet while he's getting a haircut, uh, I think it's fantastic, man. I, I, again, everything about this movie, you're right. We've talked about it at nauseum, and uh, I'm okay with that because this movie is fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah yes. Movie- but and and the thing is, it's it's funny because like with Patrick John Patrick Mason, every there's a there's this whole thing online that they're saying that it, it's it's 007 when he retired. You know like, that's yeah. that's kind of what I always um, pictured this as, um, and it wasn't necessarily that he learned a whole bunch of stuff while he was in prison, because uh, I got kind of the the impression that he was just ignored and they didn't let him go to the library and get all these books. Uh, but to be a Secret Service agent, you, you need to be, you know, a pretty smart guy, you know, and I, I kind of pictured, you know, if James Bond um, completed a mission that maybe went sideways and the British Secret Service just disavowed him and said, hey, uh, yeah, we don't know who this guy is. That's kind of what would happen. Yep. Yeah, no, I still think he read books in the library. I'll be good. But yeah, man, he uh, uh, it's a great role, great role. John Patrick Mason. He made he's made my mountain. Um, every time I've gotten a chance to put him in, it's mm-hmm. like uh, bring out John Patrick Mason. Um, <laughs> but he's uh, he's fantastic, man. He's he's everything with, with the bonus that he's you know he just this movie hit so much for so, so hard for so many of us. Uh, and this time frame. Um, all right. So for that was our number twos. Uh, number twos were Ramirez from Highlander, and then thrice John Patrick Mason from The Rock. So guess who's making the final mountain, guys? <laughs> I'm okay with it. Like I'm 100 okay with it. The thing Mason is, there's is really not a bad movie. pick for Sean Connery. No, there isn't. Oh uh, well, the, that uh, movie that I never uh, saw that Dave mentioned earlier. The one that's playing behind you isn't great either. <laughs> isn't great. Not as but, bad. His role, not, but his role, his role is it fantastic. It's good. His He's good as him. Alan Quartermain. Just the addition of Tom Sawyer to that, which is yeah, yeah, completely yeah, yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. 
And he wasn't uh, even racist in the movie, which that's not Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, remember, you're the only only person that I know, the only other person I know that watched this. Remember that JCVD series on yeah. Amazon Prime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the Tom Sawyer? Was, when oh, they I'm were in. doing I'm the in. John Sawyer. You guys got to watch this. It's on Amazon Prime. It was, it was like a like, Huck Finn horror movie. <laughs> But it, but he was but the thing is he's a he's an actor playing himself and damn but he's actually a secret agent so yeah. he takes these movie gigs to put him in places where he could do like hits on so, like he's a real stuff. life secret agent <laughs> but he's also but he's also a world but he's also John Claude Van Damme yeah. Yeah, but like one of the movies he films in it is he's Huck Finn so he's literally in like the shirtless like jean like 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 and then uh, the guy and then the guy the that straw. plays n-word the guy that plays n-word uh yeah. what is it jim. edward jim jim <laughs> yeah they, so that his character name is n-word jim yeah like not, not the, the actual word. character name i'm not editing here this is the way he says n-word jim so he ends up hooking up with the girl that he likes and he goes my girl's fucking n-word jim <laughs> <laughs> The show so is good. so fucking great. Yeah. It's so great. I wish it would have picked it up for a second season, but it's so fucking great, man. Uh, Amazon Prime, kid. Check that shit out. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, what do we got for round one? This is your So wait, are we not doing honorable mentions? After this, there is no turning back. Do it. Do it. Come on. Come on. You yeah. told you said at the beginning you said we were we were gonna not do it this episode we we're just gonna do it regular right we're not gonna we're not gonna do the because we didn't post it so we're not gonna do the whole special recording of it oh so don't so so wait so wait, are we so, not doing so we, shouldn't we do them in the show since we're not recording uh, them after uh sure I guess I mean you want to be technical about it <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want to be it's like a, the thing we always do and if, you, if you guys want to <laughs> make sense yeah. then yeah go ahead. Yeah. Use your logic. If you're gonna start yeah. using the things I actually said yeah. against me, that was the best. Like you started playing the number one in Debone. I could see Debone, and I just make eye contact. Like, Wait, <laughs> this is not what how math works. What's going? On? So are we doing okay? So honorable mentions. Um. Yeah. yeah. So I left out. I, I left out John Patrick Mason and Jim Malone for the reasons I explained to you guys. Um. I'm gonna put Draco from Dragonheart. Um, sure. I'm gonna put um. I won't say all of them because there's not that many for everybody to say. I'll just pick. I'll pick two, um, and then I'll, I'm going to take it back to uh, to high school, and I'm going to put uh, William von Baskerville from The Name of the Rose. Oh, such a great! That's on my honorable <laughs> mentions. I love that movie. Yeah, man, monks, what a great monks movie. and murder mystery. I'm in. I'm all, I'm all aboard for this, um, and I won't say the other ones because I know one of them Debona's probably got because we just mentioned it. <laughs> And as it's right. in the background. Devona, what do you got for honorable mentions? Um, like I said, I do have Alan Quartermain and yeah. honorable mentions because yeah. we're looking at the role specifically. I do think that he did a great job Alan Quartermain and yeah. Lee Shortner, gentlemen. Um, and I had, uh, of course, from Highlander. And then my only other one is uh, Daniel Dravitt from The Man Who Would Be King. That's oh. another one I had on my list. Um, <laughs> I... I love that movie. I'm a huge fan of Rudyard Kipling works and they did a spectacular job translating this into a film. Him and, and Michael Caine. Um, him and Michael Caine. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can't, it, it was, it's an untouchable duo. So yeah, I, I love the man who would be king. Uh, okay, so from the ones that have not been mentioned, uh, I'm going to mention uh, Major General Roy Urquhart from A Bridge Too Far. Uh, it is uh, just one of my favorite war movies, uh, and uh, Connery is just this stoic uh, Scottish, uh, you know, major general, and he's just fantastic. It's it's a great movie. It's a yeah. long one. It's uh it's like just under three hours, uh, but uh, fuck, worth the watch. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Uh, I I have. Uh, Sean Connor. Uh, oh, from Rising, Rising Sun. From Rising nice. Sun. With Wesley uh, Snipes? Yes, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I completely <laughs> forgot about that one. So, yeah. yeah, John, John Connor from, uh, from Rising Sun. Uh, and then uh, King Richard from Robin Hood, uh, Prince of Thieves. Wasn't he in uh, that for like five minutes? Hey, 
He was fucking time time bandits. Time fucking bandits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking I, King Richard. I, I can't I can't comment. I'm... Uh, and He's no then, Richard Lewis, but I mean I'll get it. And then uh, it's so funny. His mole doesn't keep moving. <laughs> I have a mole. <laughs> Uh, and then one of my favorite, and I, this is one of the movies, I think the only movie that would be changed if I were going to change the movie would, uh, if it was going to be, so the honorable mention is Finding Forrester. I fucking love that movie. And his role as a shut-in, as a super famous uh, author, um, it just, the whole movie is super touching, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, and then that end scene at the end is just, Chef's kiss, bro. I fucking love that. Um, anyway, so uh, those are my honorable mentions. So, okay, uh, I just I, I just need to throw out Robert Mac McDougal. I thought somebody would mention that from Entrapment. <laughs> I, was well, I, I, I I didn't mention it because I thought it'd be I might be somebody's number one, but yeah, oh. that's uh yeah, Entrapment. Uh, I got my first blowjob watching Entrapment, so uh, <laughs> this will forever hold a special place in my heart, and by heart I mean penis. Uh, so <laughs> the 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 one that I had that would kind of be an honorable mentions um if I were doing full movies not just roles would be um his part in murder and murder in, on the Orient Express uh but it's just he didn't steal the movie or anything but it's just a great great movie with him in it yeah so that it's never, impossible never to seen it. you know steal the movie yeah. with that one he had yeah such a great cast I didn't see the original one I read the book uh when I was in high school. Uh, and then I saw the the re the movie that came out like two years ago. Oh, I didn't right. know they remade it. Yeah, with Kenneth what? Branagh as, yeah. uh, oh. as Perot. Very wow. good. Yeah. yeah. I'm it's in. a very well-made movie. I just don't like the ending, neither in the book or in the movie. So. <laughs> 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 um, uh, all right. Anyways, so let's go on to uh, For Real this time. Round one. This is your last chance. <laughs> After this, there is no turning back. Do it! Do it! Come on! Come on! All right. Number one is Jeffrey. So to surprise people, because I came late to this party, um, very late to this party, and that I've only watched these movies in the last, like, two and a half, three years, my number one is actually going to be James Bond. That is also fine. my number one. Um, I, right. I, I watched them a couple movies growing up. I was never really into them. And then I think it was actually, I think it might have even been last year. I think I told Dave, I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch all yeah. the James Bond movies. I, I, I never really like I knew little bits from them here and there. And I was like, I'm going to watch them. Tell me the order. What's the order I need to watch them? And he gave me the order and I watched all of them. And I absolutely, uh, you know, fell in love with the movies. Super late in life. 38, is 37 years order. Old. Is there a different order than the. No, than he the just he, wa he wanted the chronological order. Because when, okay. when you're when you're looking at iTunes, it lists them alphabetically. Oh, okay. and I mean, I know like no, no, Connery no. was like in seven of them, but I didn't know if there was a specific order to watch them in or what. But Connery, Connery is James Bond. I mean, to me, after watching all of them, I know Neary disagrees, but he's to me my the the, the best James uh, Bond. I've only seen I've Absolutely. only seen one I've I've only seen one Connery Bond movie, and it, oh, okay. according to da according to David, it was the worst one. Oh, you but, saw uh, Live and Let uh, Die. No, that one's one Roger in, Moore. Oh the yeah, my in, bad. Uh, the one he's in. The one I just heard Vegas? worst Bond movie. <laughs> oh, uh, no, Vegas no. is Diamonds Are Forever. Diamonds yeah, Are I, Forever. I, I do think that's his worst one. Yeah, so uh, I've only seen one Connery Bond, and uh, and David. After I watched it, Connery, and David was like, "That's the worst one you could have watched." I'm like, "Oh, yeah. well, sorry." All right, never it, mind. it also is the uh, conclusion of of uh, of the Blofeld trilogy. So, you did tell so me that. You did yeah. tell me that. Uh, but it, you know, it's funny because. I did the same thing with Star Trek, where I was like, I've only seen Nemesis. And David was like, that's the, the, the worst absolute one. worst yeah, that's, one. That's, that's, that's the worst <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one where they literally go back in time to find whales, and yes. it's better than Nemesis. Not only is it better, it's exponentially better. That's one of the best ones. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I seem to do that. And I just, again, it's just random. I was like, I'll watch this one. And he's in Vegas. What can I I was just, uh, and then... And it's um, it's not but, bad. I I don't think it's it's bad by by any stretch of the imagination. But I mean, it, you're not talking about from Russia with love or or gold, yeah. or, right? You know, it's and and you know with with Connery the the what he brought to the character because it it's very different. Like you see, like watch like a Daniel Craig where he's like all action oriented. Sean Connery gave him gave gave 
that character, that debonair, that suaveness, but at the same time, he's still dangerous. And and to me, some of the best one-liners are from Sean Connery's uh, James oh, Bond. Like, like when Pussy Galore introduces himself, herself, it's like, I'm Pussy Galore. And he's like, I must be dreaming. Like, he just looks like, <laughs> I must be dreaming. Well, it goes all the way back to the first one when he's being chased um, by, um, by Dr. No's men uh, up to um, – the, the house of the the, the chick who's gonna go bang right uh, and uh, and he he kind of runs them off the road uh, they were driving in a hearse and and the guy who you know sees the accident happen pulls up next to him and goes what happened he goes I think they were on their way to a funeral you know it just yeah. that's you you get it right there from the beginning he kind of I think um, starts shifting what we know of as an action hero. Uh-huh. In it with with James Bond, uh, before then, action really only existed in westerns, um, and uh, and and possibly war films. But war films were usually more dramas than anything else. So so you really start to see this shift with him in the early '60s and lots of hand to hand combat, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, car chases, stuff that would go on to become like the standard in in the action movies that we enjoy today we wouldn't have john wick without sean connery as bond you know Mm -hmm. it's a long way to get there you know we're talking about you know many decades in between but it it starts with him yeah and i mean this is when we were having the conversation about whether or not we were doing roles or individual films i knew that james bond was going to figure in it was just going to be kind of where he fell and if i had to pick one like i i knew that he was going to be in here if i had had to pick one i know that goldfinger is probably the the textbook answer but i go from russia with love if i've if i've got to pick a, a connery bond film uh from russia with love was just it was it was spectacular, and I felt like it really encompassed uh, everything that he could do as James Bond. It had you know him being suave. It had the smart ass one liners. It had just the right amount of action, and he did all of that so well. And you're right in the fact that everybody has take you know has their own take on Bond, but they all go back to the things that Sean Connery did. He laid all of that groundwork for a franchise that's what 24, 25 movies deep now. Right. Um, yeah. counting them all. And it's 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 that role that's inescapable uh, from what for what Sean Connery did throughout his entire career. It you know starting with Doctor No and, and going right up until the end we did we said six or seven, seven. but um, yeah it's just he when I was growing up my parents bond was more and then I got then I really liked Pierce Brosnan and I eventually went back and I still have a special heart place in my heart for Pierce Brosnan because yeah. my first was uh, was Goldeneye right. But I will tell you that Brosnan is my favorite, but I think that Connery is the best James Bond is the way that I kind of fall back on it. And it's just because I feel like he was a little bit of everything. I feel like after Sean Connery did Bond, everybody had one element of Bond that they were really good at. I I feel he was the actor who fully encompassed um, a – you know, a more tongue in cheek version of what Ian Fleming had in mind, but also just kind of right on the nose with what yeah. Ian Fleming had in mind. When, yeah, I, uh, and then you you've got you've got um like in You Only Live Twice. I think I texted Dave when I when the first movie first started that he's in bed with the the Asian girl and he's like he's like I love he he's like I love eating Chinese, but I get hungry an hour later or something like that. I was like, what is this movie? What is, what is happening? Oh man, yeah, Sean Connery, dude, he he created that framework for Bedham and Dedham, right? It's <laughs> yeah. like that's just. Funny because I was gonna bring that up. Bobby Slay, comedian Bobby Slay, and has that joke where he says, uh, "Growing up, Bond was my favorite superhero. He was like, he was literally fucking women who were trying to kill him." You know, <laughs> difficult it is. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, it, uh, that, that, that's the best way to to encompass Bond in general. I think you know any yeah. Bond. I think they all fucked women that, that they were trying to kill them. But oh yeah, uh, uh, you know I haven't seen enough. I haven't again. I only saw that one uh, as far as Sean Connery portrayal. 
I only saw that one. Um, and I actually thought it was okay. I, it's when I told David, he was like, that's not, no, don't do that. Oh, go dude, back. go. Uh, um, but uh, I, I didn't find it bad. I just, I'm like, oh, I, 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 you know, it was fine. I thought it, was, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. Um, I, I uh, enjoyed it, but I, I should go back and watch all of them. But uh, just like with the with the the Bona, I, I'm Pierce Brosnan was my Bond. Uh, so, but I'm also very okay with other people. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not that dude that's like yeah, they would never. You can't. This actor has to be like I don't give a fuck. I I, I yeah. like everybody who's played Joker and and most people who played Batman. So who the fuck cares? Like this, James Bond is one of those iconic roles where you, you could just you know uh, as yeah. long as you plug in the right person it works you know and I, I don't um, think that they've had a, a a bad actor portray Bond um, each one has kind of latched on to uh, like you said to Bond a certain facet of Bond um, and I think that the two that have gotten um, the closest to what Ian Fleming had in mind um is, is Sean Connery and um, and Timothy and Dalton Dan, and uh, Daniel oh. Craig? Uh, Dalton is looks the most like yeah. Bond, um, and and he d- certainly gets the darkness of Bond because Bond is a very dark and twisted character in the books, uh, much more than, than in the movies. And those two Dalton films really kind of show that. Um, but Connery, um, if if he could have had the um, uh, the edginess back in the sixties that, uh, and it was edgy then uh, for the time, but if he could have had the edginess that they give Daniel Craig today, I, I think that you know, it, it would have been uh, even more like the literary bond, but, uh, but he, he was the first bond I saw because my grandfather and I used to sit and watch his, uh, his movies as a kid. And, uh, and I saw him even before it was in that period where uh, the, the bond license was in limbo between Dalton and Brosnan. So I, I saw it before GoldenEye came out. GoldenEye, I had already seen, I think, all of the Bond movies up until that time. So I, I don't have that emotional connection to Brosnan that, that most people my age do. Can we just take a second to admire the bone of dog? And yeah. <laughs> oh, man, he's gorgeous. He's, he's, I don't know, he's, he's feeling it, right? <laughs> no, it's going. All right, Foggy, hop, hop we, that, Foggy. We, we, we recorded like 30 episodes this year. Never seen his fucking dog. Like, <laughs> he's like, are you guys talking about Bond? I love Bond. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you who my favorite is. <laughs> Uh, all right, James Bond uh, is everybody's number one except mine. Uh, and then uh, we will talk about uh, my number one is, of course, I've tabled it twice now, is Jim Malone <laughs> from The yeah, Uncomfortables. Uh, you know, again, another mentor ro- uh, role that he played and uh, very different than the other mentor roles that he played in the movies that I mentioned, which uh, the other mentor uh, mentor roles. Uh, that I had were the guy from Medicine Man and uh, King Arthur from First Night. <laughs> He's very different in this role. He's very different in the sense of, um, you know, just the the sheer brilliance of his acting, the the line delivery, uh, the iconic, you know, delivery of of his lines. He in a movie that has De Niro and Kevin Kevin Costner, uh, Kevin Costner he has the most memorable scenes in that fucking movie uh and uh, he has like you know that's pretty t- difficult to do like you're in a fucking de niro movie and yet you still have fucking scenes that people remember more so than de niro um i love everything about that movie and including his role uh including how how he got andy garcia to get out of character to stop with the fucking bullshit you know paper answers or whatever the hell he called them you know, and uh, like, you're a Mick, right? You're a Mick. Yeah. <laughs> like, just fucking push, because he just wanted to see what he would do. You know, like I just wanted to see what you'll do, and uh, he's like, "Oh, I like him. I like him." Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I fucking love that. For a long time, Geekmore had uh, his his uh, his speech from Untouchables in the intro. If you go back a few years at geekbro.net, you can go back to the old episode and you hear. Uh, Jalone saying like if you if you uh, if if you if he comes at you with a knife you better come at him with a gun if he comes at you with a gun you better put him in a morgue like that's yeah. in the intro because it was so influential to me like that's one of the greatest 
uh, movie lines of all time. The uh, Chicago you know, Way, movie. man. Yeah, yeah Chicago Way, uh, which I thought was deep dish, but apparently fucking bullet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, uh, Jimmy Malone, dude. I just I love this dude. You guys have uh, two of you have had him on your list too, so I want to give you guys some time to talk about yeah. him too. But um, nothing I haven't already said before, dude, about Jimmy. Malone, right. Well, so. and that that's that's where I stand with you know he made my list of federal agents. And uh, so, so I've, I've spoke my my piece about him, but I, I yeah, there was no way I was going to because I, I did the same thing as Jeff. I was like, well, maybe I don't need to mention him again. But you you can't you can't <laughs> get away from just how damn good that role is. And you're right. I mean, the Chicago way, man. They put one of yours in hospital. They put one of theirs in the morgue. Like that whole thing. Like it's just it was so perfect. And you're right. In so many in so many of these. It's so many of these teacher roles, like we, we've established, right? He, he does the mentor thing a lot, but the way he comes at it from all the different angles. And like you said, this is a very different teacher role because he's taking, he's making the straight laced guy who's doing everything the right way, learn to do it the good way, you know, like the way that's going to work. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's a, it's a great pick, man. And it's, it's, it's a spectacular role. Hearing, hearing you mention that and you guys talking, I just kind of put two and two together. And Jim Malone is uh, John Patrick Mason. It's the, They're both the same character. Yeah. Because he's getting the straight-laced guy in Stanley Goodspeed and telling him, listen, <laughs> you don't always need to go – you can't go the straight way to get shit done. You've got to do it. And he, and he, he does the same kind of thing that – like what Neri said with Andy Garcia's character – where he's like, he, he messes with Stanley and he's like, you know, your bet, the whole your best line and all that stuff. It's very Jim Malone in the way that he was talking to Andy Garcia. So I, I can see now why I love both of those characters so much. I, again, I only, I didn't put them on my mountain just because I've talked about them so much because I absolutely adore them and I wanted to <laughs> kind of spread out, but man, I, I mean, I love those characters. Jim Malone is just, he, he, he might be the best role that, that that Sean Connery is as an overall character did, but well, the Academy um, of uh, Motion Pictures agrees with him. Yeah, he, that yes. was his only Oscar, right, for supporting actor. Yep. Yeah. He got robbed. <laughs> uh, look at all the other movies that he's done, and he's that's the only Academy Award that he has. Like that's just. I mean, I, how did they not pick him for Time Bandits and supporting? Right. Him? For real. Did supported you the hell him? out of that cast. He supported the hell out of it. <laughs> did, did, did you not see him in fucking uh, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? You <laughs> uh, <laughs> wore the shit out of that crown. No, 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 honest question. Did you not see him? Because maybe you got up and you had the yeah. Because it, and... it was it was the end, and I had to reach out to the bottom of my popcorn, and I looked yeah. down. There you go. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't it be fucked up if the guy who was nominating fucking that? This is not the way it works, but imagine <laughs> one guy that nominates actors and shit, and then he's just looking down on his popcorn, and fucking Sean Connery pops up. He looks up, and Sean Connery's gone. He's like, oh, yeah. okay, whatever. He just moves oh. on. Like, uh, all right. See him. Um, all right. So the, our number ones were James Bond, James Bond, James Bond, Jim Malone. Uh, very interesting. Um, final mountain here. Uh, three of the four characters start with the letter J and the fourth one has the letter J as his last name. So uh, James Bond, Jim Malone, John Patrick Mason, and then Dr. Jones Sr. Those are the, that's the final mountain. And I found it uh, when I was writing it down, I was like, Oh, there's a lot of fucking J's in here, huh? They've hey, got John, a perfect you may want to play a... maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe that was uh, maybe that was how Sean Connery decided what roles he would take. Yeah. <laughs> are there uh, enough? Dave, are, you, are, are there enough letter mountain? J's in this role? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Dave, yeah Dave. I, I got a perfect mountain. Fuck it, hey, that's been, it's been a long time. Yeah, I think it's been well over a year since we've had somebody have a perfect mountain on our fucking on our list, right? That's since a long I've time, been dude. since I've been on here regularly, starting back in like February, nobody's had one. I know that for a fact. There you go. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's been a long time since we had a perfect mountain. I was gonna create like a sound effect for a perfect mountain, but since it happens so infrequently, I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna fucking make a sound effect for that. <laughs> I got that, time man. to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use that. <laughs> This is way more useful. That'll be that day. <laughs> that is <laughs> useful to have that. 
Um, yeah, uh, it's a fantastic, that's a fantastic list, man. And I, I, I honestly think if you add, if you just ask people to just off the cuff, hey, name me a couple, name me, name me some of your favorite Sean Connery roles. Those are going to be the people you're going to hear the most anyway. Yeah. 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 I, I was kind of uh, 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 just in the sheer, just for the sheer, nothing against Dave. I'm just saying, just for, I, I wish there was like a, a deep cut in in the final mountain. I know it wasn't going to happen because nobody, the whole point of deep cut is not everybody fucking uh, thinks of them. But mm-hmm. um, uh, kids, uh, to the listeners, go check out the fucking the other movies, man. Go check out Medicine Man. Go check out uh, First Night. Go uh, check out Time Bandits. I have to go check out Time Bandits, not because of Sean Connery, not or not just because of Sean Connery, <laughs> but I've never seen it. And every oh, time I watch sorry. the Goldbergs and in Adam's room, there's a poster of Time Bandits. Like I always go, yeah. I gotta watch Time Bandits. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's in the family man. share. It's in the family share, BFF. Yep. Yeah. Kids, go yeah. watch Highlander. It's kid friendly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> watch Highlander. That, 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 that interrogation off is and boobies very being PC. Sucked. Yeah, the interrogation scene. <laughs> Super PC holds up super PC. well. <laughs> it holds up. It holds up, people. Uh, go watch it. If you get offended easily, go watch an interrogation scene. Yeah. I looked up that that dude, the guy that plays the actor. Yeah. And he was in Star Trek. And he was in Star Trek. He was in a couple of different Star Trek shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, the and, then the line. Di- and then he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he died. Uh, he was actually in Star uh, shooting Star Trek during like that um, uh, earthquake that shook. Uh, the Bay Area during the World Series, remember that? Uh-huh. Yeah. And they yes. sent everybody. Ho- they sent everybody home immediately, and he actually went home in fucking full costume and full alien costume. Um, but I can't get, and I know this is morbid, but it's just one of those things where he died at a, such a young age. I was like, I wonder where he died of. Nowhere on the fucking internet does it say how he died. Oh, I thought you were about to tell me that he died in the earthquake in full alien costume. I me thought too. You were gonna say the same thing. Thing. <laughs> You're gonna be like, and then and then they excavated his house, and there he was, still dressed like a Romulan. A <laughs> oh, way better story, dude. Way better story. Like, I think oh, all three of us were on the edge of our seats, like, oh my god, he fucking died dressed like an alien. Holy yeah. shit! Oh. Oh. So much. That's what I thought when I was reading it. They're like, and they sent him home in the fucking costume. I'm like, let's fucking read up on this story. And then uh, I couldn't find it. Um, yeah. All right. That's our final mountain. James Bond, Jim Malone, uh, John Patrick Mason, and the uh, Dr. Jones Sr. Tor and Dr. Jones. Uh, so make sure you guys check that out. Am I the only one that watches Big Bang? Apparently so. Yeah. Uh, they did a they did a nerd song uh, where um, two of them combined. Uh, they did a song called uh, "Thor and Doctor Jones," where uh, Doctor Jones gets gets the hammer and is and then, <laughs> but in and and in his and in his accent, his Indian accent, he says "Thor." This is Thor and Doctor. Jo-. It just goes on and on about Thor and Doctor Jones, and it's so fucking it makes me laugh. Uh, super catchy. All right, man. That's our mountain. Make sure to check out uh, the podcast. Uh, if you are listening to us now, you can watch us on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube uh, usually comes up two or three days after the uh, the audio version comes up. If uh, you're listening, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, you can listen to us if you want to. I don't know why, but you could go ahead and listen to us. Audio version uh, available on geekbro.net, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and the Helium Podcast Network, uh, available at Helium uh, Comedy. Uh, so check that out. Uh, and wherever podcasts are found, uh, make sure you check out uh, the other podcasts that we have on the Geek Bro Network, including What You Got, which Daniel DeBone is also on there, available at geekbro.net. Also uh, on geekbro.net is Better Let Me Tell You and uh, the What's Up Bro podcast. Um, so thank you very much for checking us out. My comedy is at narysigns.com or what was his name.com. I, I forget that I, I got to look at the camera, but move on for this shit. Um, anyways, so thank you guys for checking us out. That's how lists are made. Excellent. Oh yeah. We are at an hour and 18 minutes, fellas. Yeah, we yeah, lots of lots of tables on that one. That went really well. All right, I'm gonna get out of here because uh, I got time to watch an episode of Bly Manor. Um, oh, cool. ooh. how far are you? Nice. Uh, we're only we're three episodes deep. Okay, I started oh, watching the Sopranos. Nice for the first so, time. Yeah, never watched it before, so we're. On I, I've never nine. seen it either. It, it's I, I've never, on my list. I'm like three watch. episodes in. I'm like three seasons in. And then I forgot what happened that I just never got back. But now that I'm stealing Missy's HBO Max, I'll 
probably go back. Nice. Are you yeah, no, we're uh, we're like <laughs> three episodes into Bly Manor, and because of because of like what I knew about Hill House, like I'm trying to be like really keenly aware of things going on in the background, so I mm -hmm. keep seeing things that are just keeping me awake at night. So it's yeah. spectacular. Um, so yes, yeah, thoroughly enjoying that, gentlemen. Enjoy it. Have Take a good care. Talk after you finish it. We'll do.